so close to you guys. Oh. Like this is this is you. It's okay, it's alright. We don't bite. Welcome to Sunday Assembly. I'm Ryan. And I am Sam Renderos. <laughs> okay, no, no, that's wrong. Um, I'm Amy. Sam uh, was going to host today, but he is out sick. Yes. Um, so we are, are thinking of him and his family. Our thoughts and songs are with thoughts him. Thoughts and songs. Uh, Sunday Assembly Los Angeles is a God-free community that celebrates a worldview grounded in evidence and reason. We invite everyone to join us as we do our best to live, live better, better, help, help often, often, and, and wonder, wonder more. more. Today marks six years of Sunday Assembly. Woo! <laughs> six. Do, do you guys remember like when Rosie O'Donnell had her own show and she'd be like, confetti! Like it was the best. I wish that were like, yeah, anyway. no, we've got a cue. We've got a sound sound cue. Right, yes. <laughs> and we're all saying to help clean up afterwards. Right. That's good. Well, none of this would be possible if it hadn't have been for the vision from our friends across the pond in London, um, some work by our amazing board of directors, and volunteers like you and our wonderful assemblers. Yay, six years. Uh, Happy uh, birthday, Sunday yeah. Assembly. And thanks <laughs> to uh, Ian and yes. Russell and everyone who helped us get uh, started. Uh, normally, on our, this is our first birthday when we don't have uh, balloons. We're being a little more uh, environmentally conscious, so we've got uh, some imaginary party favors. Confetti! <laughs> so anytime you feel like things are getting boring, just... <laughs> <laughs> that was lovely. Yeah, see, that's what, you yeah, don't want to be that close to me anymore, that do you? so <laughs> lovely. Uh, okay. Uh, so today we are starstruck. Last time I was starstruck was when I was stopped in customs with Mary Louise Street, but you guys can call her Meryl. He's, he has mentioned that every single day since it has happened. It was a good day. <laughs> it happened before I met him. <laughs> Did it not? Uh, today we'll be talking about literal stars and how it relates to us as humans. Our guest speaker is none other than Dr. Sabrina Steerwalt. Which is only fitting, Sabrina speaks a lot for us, I feel like. She's one of our best speakers. Um, outside of that, we have Marjorie Anapoff. She is trying her best, and someone is being creative in our creative space. Marsha will be doing a reading. <laughs> 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 Thank you, Ryan. Uh, we have a couple other people out today. Uh, Noah, who usually heads up our volunteer team, is uh, visiting a, a new human that was born mm -hmm. in his, his family. His niece or nephew, yeah. yeah. Uh, and so some part of his labor retirement scheme. Yes. Kind of. So uh, Phil and Tara uh, have taken over for Noah today. Uh, Done so a fantastic yes, job. Yes, kudos to them. Uh, and then uh, Fletch, uh, our musical director, and uh, who was also going to be playing uh, music with Steve today, uh, just got word that his uh, dad, who was ill, uh, passed away. So he had to fly to the UK, uh, and our thoughts are with him today. And uh, we really appreciate Steve uh, going it alone with very little notice and sort of revamping a, a really nice melodic set for us. So yeah. uh, let's hear it for Steve. Coffee shop guy. Uh, speaking of, we're going to go ahead and get started with a couple of songs. So please uh, put your hands together one more time and for welcome Steve, Steve Watkins, Watkins and, and Christine. And Christine. Jones. Yeah. I spilled coffee on them. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks very much for having us. And a big thanks to Christine here for jumping in just at the last minute, just this morning. Come on, skinny love, just last the year. Pour a little song we were never here. Oh, my, my, oh, my, 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 my. Staring at a sink of blood and crushed veneer. Tell my love to rack, rack it all. Cut out all the ropes and let me fall. Oh my, my, 
Oh, my, 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 my. Right in this moment, the sword is tall. And I told you to be patient, and I told you to be fine. And I told you to be balanced, and I told you to be kind. And in the morning, I'll be with you, but it will be a different kind. I'll be holding all the tickets, you'll be holding all the fine. Come on, skinny love, what's happening here? Suckle on the hope in life proceeds. Oh, my, my. Oh, my, 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 my. Solid load is forced to slow and swim. And I told you to be patient. And I told you to be fine. And I told you to be balanced. And I told you to be kind. And now all your love is wasted, saying, who the hell was I? I'm breaking out the bridges at the end of all your life. Who will love you? Who will fight? Who will fall far behind? Thank you very much. I'm going to take just a second and make sure Christine's vocal mic is. Oh, look at that. That is some MacGyvering live right in front of you. Is that going to work? All right. You guys might have heard of this next song. I thought it was kind of on topic for today. It's a uh, it's band, the Beatles. They're pretty good. I might have based my entire musical life on them. Uh, all right. Now that is a mom joke, if ever I've heard one. Like. Words are flowing out like endless rain into a paper cup. They slither while they pass. They make their way across the universe. Pools of sorrow waves of joy are drifting through my open mind possessing and caressing me Light, which dance before me like a million eyes. They call me on and on across the universe. Thoughts meander like a restless wind inside a letterbox. They tumble blindly as they make their way across the universe. 
Shades of life are ringing through my open ears, inciting and inviting me. Limitless, undying love which shines before me like a million suns. It calls me on and on across the universe. Thanks very much. Awesome. Thanks, Thanks Steve. Steve. Thanks, Christine. Thank oh, I guess I'm going to stop. Okay, we'll just we'll just stop. Trying to play to my angles, but yeah. whatever. <laughs> all, all your sides are good. Um, thanks everyone who brought donations for the LGBT Center of Los Angeles. My people appreciate you. Um, <laughs> if you'll notice, there are fewer people here than normal. Well, it's a holiday weekend, so I imagine a lot of people are out of town for that. And I know the gays have a mass exodus to Palm Springs every time there's a three-day weekend. That's <laughs> <laughs> what we do. So <laughs> Uh, you're yeah, late, you're late so, for but it's Veterans Day on Monday, so if you're a veteran and you're here, we'd like to thank you for your service, and um, yeah, just extend a Sunday assembly thank you. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Next month, we are collecting items for um, our Giving Tree, our annual event that Amy's going to tell you more about, but... Uh, yeah, she's been running this since its inception four years ago, so I'm going to let her talk. Uh, this is a really cool, uh, really meaningful project uh, that we do. It's offered through the Department of Social Services. It's called Adopt a Family. Uh, and we each year uh, sign up for a certain number of families, uh, usually with uh, a large number of kids, and they have uh, specific requests for the holidays. Uh, and we, there's lots of ways to get involved. Uh, you can donate a gift card. Uh, you can sign up to uh, to sponsor a child and get them with uh, gifts according to like their interests and, and sizes. Uh, or you can sign up for a particular item, either an item that's listed or another. We have an Amazon uh, wish list that we populated with suggested items. Uh, you can come to a wrapping party. We've got a couple wrapping gift wrapping. Um, <laughs> it'll be a while before. <laughs> I'm willing to offer the, the other time. Um, so I think we have three uh, set up right now, or we uh, just with a lot of stocking stuffers and other things to wrap. And then a few days before uh, Christmas, we will deliver to the families. Uh, it's it's every year each family has agreed to meet with us, and uh, they're usually asking for uh, clothing and shoes and services. Uh, some families, like right now, one of our three families is experiencing homelessness and is in a, a motel often they've just secured housing if they have housing and they really don't have anything like they're looking at a, a giftless holiday uh, and 
families are only eligible for one to be adopted one time. So uh, they don't, they're usually really excited when they call because there's no guarantee that they'll have a sponsor. Uh, and this is the one time they'll be able to take advantage of that, that program and uh, the, you know, looks on Can kids' watch faces. The whole yeah, it's uh, kind of unbelievable. So if you get a chance to participate in that, I highly recommend it. We have uh, our, our, our lovely little tin bomb. Little <laughs> Christmas tree, uh, kind of, yeah, solstice tree. Uh, there are some some of the items on there. If you want to just take a, a tag, you can. Oh, you can bring items to any Sunday assembly event. Uh, you can mail it to us, or uh, yes. you can arrange to come deliver with us uh, we before have the an event. So Amazon wish list that is listed on your program. The link is also there. Are these QR codes that I hear do magical things if you take a picture of them. Um, yeah. 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 You won't regret it. No, I agree. Um, while you were checking in, someone may have asked if you had any milestones that you would like to write out, just announcements for achievements or struggles or anything like that. So we have a few that people have written down. And then after we read these, we'll ask Ooh. if anyone else has anything they'd like to announce. I have one. Uh, today is Katie's birthday. Katie from our <laughs> house band, Ground Control. <laughs> Woo! So she gets... All the imaginary party favors. <laughs> Happy <laughs> birthday, Katie. <laughs> Thank you. Really want confetti. <laughs> um, I have one. Alan Shinkman is very glad to be back and just got a new job teaching math and science at an LAUSD magnet school. All right. <laughs> uh, it looks like Margaret Downey is here. The Free Thought Society received a $20,000 pledge for a Thomas Paine statue. Congratulations. Nice. <laughs> oh, um, Roberto closed on a house in Long Beach. Wow. <laughs> Woo, <laughs> Roberto. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> oh, there he is back there. Uh, and November 24th is uh, Meredith's birthday and Ryan's birthday and Liviana's birthday. <laughs> Anyone else have a birthday on the 24th? <laughs> Fun, fun story <laughs> about my birthday. I was recently like thinking about what I wanted to do for my birthday this this month and this year. I was like, you know, it's turning thirty. I'll have a funeral themed birthday party for my twenties. <laughs> so <laughs> nice. I am a fan. Yes, Diana. Um, but then I I was talking to my mom about it, and she was like, "Well, you're turning twenty nine. <laughs> I was like, "I got a whole another year." <laughs> Nice. Really forgot my age. After 25, I don't think it matters anymore, though. Other people have 29 <laughs> over and over again. Right. <laughs> We're going to skip it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, Phil Jackson has a birthday on November 13th. His age is undisclosed, mm -hmm. probably <laughs> because he can't remember, like me. <laughs> Indeterminate. <laughs> um, does anyone else? Hell's imaginary. Huh? <laughs> Does anyone else have any milestones that they would like to announce? I will bring you the mic. Anything oh. good, anything bad, anything noteworthy? Uh, so I'm Meredith. Um, uh, I've got two, one which is good, one which is, well, not necessarily, well, bad, yeah. Um, my dad ha was diagnosed with colon cancer, um, but it is very treatable, and so he's, uh, He's very proud to be a part of the nuclear age. They just nuked him, <laughs> which is a part of his treatment. Um, so he's doing well. Um, but yeah, that was new. Um, and then just recently, I found a new acting class, which I'm very, very excited about. So. Awesome. awesome. Anyone else with anything? I can't see, so. Oh, Steve, there's one. I'm not standing up, I have a bad back. But um, what I will say is I just got accepted to Calbright College. It's the new online only college that was mandatory by the state to be created last year. And it's completely free. I don't have to pay anything, it's all online. Right now it's not accredited, but it will be accredited and it'll be back accredited. So it's gonna be awesome, I don't have to pay anything, it's all self-directed and I'll get a degree in the end, hopefully. That's cool, that's, that's awesome. awesome. Thank you. Uh, I'm going for the computer route, the computer literacy route. Nice, smart. So that this is the first year they'll only accept a course of people, but next year we will have another three classes. Oh, cool. Is it undergrad or postgrad? Anyone else? No? 
Okay, cool. So if you brought any children, or if you need a break from them, we understand. Uh, you can send them to the theater next door with our child care providers. Uh, they have fun activities planned each time. Usually they're already out there, so. Yeah. Okay, cool. You can, um, Karen Bill will show you the last time we leave. Also, one of our um, big announcements that I mentioned in the email that you all got was that we are launching a childcare educational program. So instead of just having regular childcare where you send your kids to get out of your hair, they're gonna be learning about ethics and about humanistic values and that kind of I mean stuff. They were learning, but like uh, mostly about construction paper right, and yes. clay and, and like and leaves. And some science mm -hmm. experiments. Yes, and absolutely. Is that right? Yeah. right. <laughs> Values, talking <laughs> values. So, so what prompted this was, um, when I first took this job as Sunday Assembly's community organizer, I, we were talking on a board call about why we do this, and Michael mentioned that he wanted to bring his kids up in a place that is value-centric and that kind of stuff, and so that stuck with me, and I looked at the things we were doing, and I was like, what are we actually doing to advance that goal of, you know, teaching children that way. And we weren't doing much, so now we are. We're launching that in January, and we're really excited about it. If you know anyone that would like to volunteer to teach that, we do have some simple lesson plans and that kind of stuff. Just email me, ryan at sundayassemblyla.org. You may have noticed uh, green dots on some people's uh, name tags. They have been branded as new, uh, which means if uh, if you get a chance to say hello or, or show them uh, to the restroom or uh, buy them a cup of coffee, that would help someone feel a little bit more welcome today. That'd be great. Uh, we can start right now with the uh, icebreaker. Uh, I mean, the conversational pump. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> just, I'll just shut up and let this. <laughs> Uh, if you could uh, pair with a neighbor and share uh, with them a time, uh, share, share with them, since we're talking about stars today, a favorite space-themed uh, movie, character, or uh, your favorite planet. <laughs> uh, if you can turn- Pluto's a planet again. I, read I heard. It online. It's been re-promoted. It must, it must- I read it online. If it's online, it has to be true. That's I'm how confused. it works. Pluto must be so confused. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like only Pluto can tell us how it identifies. And it's just right. not, it's not a particularly sensitive. Okay, so talk some amongst yourselves. Okay. <laughs> so, I hope you got to know your neighbor. Every month we feature a creative work for your viewing and listening pleasure. Today we are featuring a reading by a writer, read by Mark. <laughs> <laughs> This might have been a last minute thing. Just kidding, we plan everything months and months in advance. And um, we are featuring a reading <laughs> by America's Funniest Home Videos. Uh, <laughs> I was gonna make a Carl Sagan <laughs> box <laughs> joke, never mind. Um, Marcia. <laughs> I flubbed it. I have a present for you. Thank you. You guys can hear me now. Demon Haunted World, Science as a Candle in the Dark by Carl Sagan. I find many adults are put off when young children pose scientific questions. Why is the moon round? The children ask. Why is the grass green? What is a dream? How deep can you dig a hole? When is the world's birthday? Why do we have toes? Too many teachers and parents answer with irritation or ridicule or quickly move on to something else. What did you expect the moon to be, square? Children soon recognize that somehow this kind of question annoys the grown-ups. A few more experiences like it and another child has been lost to science. Why adults should pretend to omniscience before six-year-olds, I can't for the life of me understand. What's wrong with admitting that we don't know something? Is our self-esteem so fragile? Thank you, Marcia. Fun story, the other morning I came down for breakfast and your five-year-olds were arguing over how an atom makes up everything. Mm -hmm. And Brant was like, no, molecules make up everything. 
And Sebastian said, no, atoms make up everything. I just let them have at it. If you, <laughs> if you try to set it straight, they will tell right. you what's what. Yes. <laughs> they are very good at that. You cannot settle that debate for them. <laughs> <laughs> I've, known, I've known it since I was a baby. <laughs> That's what they say. Yeah. Uh, our featured speaker today is a Wonder Woman in several categories. Uh, she is a professor at Occidental College, where she teaches courses like quantum mechanics and advanced electricity and magnetism. Uh, her research has taken her all over the world. She's one of my favorite people. Please welcome Dr. Sabrina Castillo-Wolf. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Can you all hear me? I don't know if you're still here. I cannot see you at all. Right. <laughs> well, thank you. All right. Now I can trip over this later. Uh, OK. Imagine we have the power to take our sun and compress it into something the size of this melon. And if you can't see this melon, it's about eight inches across. So this is no longer an ordinary melon, but this is our star, the provider of warmth and light and life. Now, if the sun is the size of this melon, I want you to picture in your mind how big the Earth would be on this scale. Are you picturing it? OK. The Earth on this sun melon scale would be this big. Oh, wait, no, no, this, <laughs> this little strawberry seed. Now, if you would hold this, my melon for me, thank you. <laughs> now, if our sun melon is over there, think about where I would have to stand. Oh, I'm in the wrong spot, sorry. Where I would have to stand with my strawberry seed. On the far seat. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, <laughs> where would I have to stand with this strawberry seed to represent how far apart the sun and the earth are on the same scale? Off the I'd have to be somewhere near the <laughs> right uh, off the carpet. I'd have to be somewhere near the entrance to the cafe. And if I had uh, another melon to represent the next closest star to us, Alpha Centauri we would have to package that melon up and ship it to Costa Rica. So the universe is a very big place. And we inhabit such a tiny fraction of it. But incredibly, we are able to probe the distant corners of the universe and question our place in all of it. And I totally dropped the strawberry seed immediately, so I'm just going to pretend that I'm not <laughs> <laughs> pretend that I'm holding it anymore. <laughs> uh, so, and I can, I can collect melon unless, do you like melon? Okay, I all right. <laughs> all right, so uh, for my job, can I get a melon remover? Thank you. Uh, for my job, I get to ask questions <laughs> about the universe and then try to answer them. So I can tell you that there's a lot that we don't know about the universe, a lot. But today I want to tell you about something that we do know pretty well, especially considering we're just tumbling around on this little strawberry seed. And that is how stars play out their lives. Uh, from, we know a lot about stellar evolution from their tumultuous birth to their explosive deaths. When my daughter was about three, she asked me, how did humans get on this earth? And I said, oh girl, you have asked the right person. <laughs> and this is the story that I told her. Maybe. It is on, come on. <laughs> did I do that? Did you do that? Great. Uh, so these are the fraction by mass of the elements that were created in the Big Bang, the event that kicked off our universe. So you can see we're looking at mostly hydrogen and helium. 
But these... But these are... The <laughs> I have no idea if I'm actually doing it. Uh, but these are the fraction, again by mass, of the elements that make up you and me. So you can see we're looking at mostly oxygen, some carbon, then we get to hydrogen. There we go, I can see. Uh, and then into nitrogen and calcium and some other stuff. So what gives? How do we make a universe that is mostly hydrogen and helium and then come up with this? Well, the answer, of course, is stars. So, so our Milky Way galaxy is home to something like 200 billion stars, including our sun. And it's also home to massive clouds of gas. And here's a picture of one grouping of such clouds of gas uh, called the Orion Nebulae. And so you can see this nebula, uh, well, you can see where it's positioned when you look at the Orion constellation and it sits in the stars that are supposed to make up Orion's sword. So when one of these clouds of gas starts to contract, to collapse under the weight of its own gravity, we start, you can imagine these little gas particles moving around and as their space that they inhabit gets smaller, as this cloud starts to collapse under the weight of gravity, temperatures heat up, densities get higher, uh, pressures get higher, and so these gas particles start bumping into each other more. And at some point, densities and pressures and temperatures are so high that when you have two hydrogen atoms, two protons, when they bump into each other, they actually fuse and stick together. Nice, I didn't do that. <laughs> and so they fuse and stick together. And when you combine four hydrogen atoms, you get out of that a helium atom. Now it just so happens that the mass of four hydrogen atoms is just a little bit more than the mass of a helium atom that you make. So we all know that E equals mc squared, right? So that E is energy and that m is mass. So that means that energy and mass are transferable. So that extra mass left over from what you started with, your four protons, your four hydrogen atoms, gets converted into energy. So you start with four hydrogen atoms and you make a helium atom and some energy. Now this star has a chance at fighting back against gravity. So now we've gone from a collapsing cloud of gas to an actual star that's shining because it's fusing hydrogen and emitting this energy that's helping it support itself against the onslaught of gravity, trying to crush it down. But lest you think this is easy, it's actually really hard to get hydrogen atoms to fuse together because of something called the Coulomb force, which says that two particles of the same charge will want to repel each other. So these uh, protons have to have a tremendous amount of energy in order to come together and fuse. Once they're together, you're golden because something called the strong force takes over and those things stay glued tight to each other. But you have to overcome this incredible potential barrier first. And even in the really high temperatures and pressures um, and densities in the core of this, thank you, sun, we still have no, we do not reach this uh, incredible energy that you need to get these things to fuse together. Except for the fact that there's a shortcut and it's called quantum tunneling. Now it was at this point in my story that my three-year-old <laughs> frowned and said, this is not the story that I wanted. <laughs> and she left the room. <laughs> so I appreciate that you're all still here. <laughs> so quantum mechanical tunneling. So in quantum mechanics, quantum mechanics tells us that you can't know the position of a particle exactly. The position, uh, the location of a particle is represented by a wave and so you can think of it as sort of a probability the particle could be found anywhere along that wave. Now, you can think of trying to get these hydrogen atoms to fuse together the old fashioned way by just giving them enough energy to slam into each other and overcome the Coulomb potential as trying to get one of these hydrogen atoms, push it up, give it enough energy to push it over a hill and to meet a, hydro a hydrogen atom on the other side. 
But since we don't have that enough energy, quantum, mechan quantum mechanics tells us that since we don't know the position of those hydrogen atoms exactly, we most likely will find it on the other side of the hill, so separate, but there is a non-zero chance that it might actually be found on the other side of the hill with the other hydrogen atoms. So we call this quantum mechanical tunneling because it sort of cheats and takes a shortcut through this barrier. So we have, we go to the next slide? So we have hydrogen fusion, hydrogen atoms coming together to make helium atoms in the core of our sun. And each time this happens, the one combination of four hydrogen atoms into a helium atom makes four times 10 to the negative 12 joules of energy. And so in case you don't think in joules every day, a, a watt is just a joule per second. So a little LED will produce four watts, four joules every second. So that's a trillion times the amount of energy produced in one of these fusion uh, events that had to have quantum mechanical tunneling to happen. So it sounds like not very much, and it sounds like it will take a long time, but there is so much hydrogen in the sun that the sun is able to power itself through this fusion. So our sun, here's a picture of our sun, is sitting um, on what we call the main sequence, so it's burning hydrogen uh, to make helium. It's been doing this for about four and a half billion years, and it will do it for about four and a half billion years more, so it's only halfway done. Uh, but you might be saying to yourself, she promised to tell us about other elements, and so far she's only talked about helium, which we already knew how we got that in the Big Bang, right? Well, this process keeps happening. So now that you've made helium, eventually that star is gonna run out of hydrogen fuel to burn, and it's gonna look for into its bag of tricks for something else to fight back against gravity. So now it says, okay, I have a bunch of helium. It starts fusing helium. So you can fuse two helium atoms to make a beryllium atom. Then you can take that beryllium atom you've made and you can move on and combine it with helium to make carbon. And then you can take carbon and put that helium atom together and then you can make oxygen, right? So now we're starting to get to the elements that make up you and me. So the, uh, can you go to the next slide? So the star will burn through all of its hydrogen and then move on to helium and go on to heavier and heavier elements. And it doesn't move on to the burning the next thing until it has, um, it, it doesn't wait till 100% done with hydrogen before it moves on to helium, for example. So it starts to get this sort of onion layered look as it moves on to the next heavier element. But eventually, It'll move its way up the periodic table and it'll get to iron. And when it gets to iron, it stops. Because if you go to the next slide, once you get to iron, if you try to fuse heavier elements than iron, you quit making energy, you need energy. And that defeats the whole purpose, right? The star is trying to produce energy to fight back against the onslaught of gravity crushing it down. And so, if it, it requires more energy to do that fusion, it's not gonna do it. So eventually, the star has burned through as much as it can, it's hit iron, and it can no longer go any further with its fusion. And thank you. At this point, thank you. The outer layers of the star have gotten kind of puffy because of the higher temperatures, and they begin to realize that they don't have anything fighting against gravity anymore. This, this energy isn't being produced from fusion once we've hit iron in the core. So those outer layers start to compress down on what's now a very solid compact core. And when they hit, they ricochet off in something like an epic bounce that sends a shock wave through the material around the star. And you get this epic explosion that we call a supernova. So these supernova send those elements, all that carbon, that oxygen, that that star worked to produce, back out into space so that those elements can settle into a planet like ours. Without this supernova, those elements would have stayed locked in that star forever. So, and if you're worried about how we make zinc or copper or tin or any of those things beyond iron in the periodic table, 
with these explosions, they're so high energy that you can throw these atoms together, uh, these nuclei together, in order to make heavier and he heavier elements. That's how we get some of the other elements. So everything around us, this stage, this camera, this man's lovely shirt who hold my melon, <laughs> you, me, it all has elements in it that were fused in the core of a star billions of years ago and then sent careening back out into space so that it could settle here and form our little strawberry seed. The stars, we come from the stars. The stars are our home. So I want to end with this image. This image, this photograph, was taken by the Voyager 1 spacecraft in 1990 uh, as it retreated into the outskirts of our solar system. When the Voyager 1 got to 4 billion light years away, uh, sorry, 4 billion miles, 4 billion miles away, yeah, whoa. <laughs> 4 billion miles away, um, they turned it around, they turned the spacecraft around and took a picture looking back at home, at our Earth. Can you see it? It's there. There we are. That's us. So this image was what inspired this tiny dot in a sunbeam, was what inspired, it's the farthest away image ever taken of Earth, and it's what inspired astronomer Carl Sagan's, thank you, uh, astronomer Carl Sagan's uh, essay, Pale Blue Dot. Sagan would have been 85 years old yesterday. So to quote Carl Sagan in Pale Blue Dot, this is home. On it, everyone you've ever loved, everyone you've ever known, everyone you've ever heard of, every human being that ever was lived out their lives. It is the aggregate of our joy and suffering. The earth is a very small stage in a vast cosmic arena. Think of all the rivers of blood shed by all of those generals and those emperors so that in glory and in triumph, they could be momentary masters of a fraction of a dot. So when we talk about why we haven't yet found signs of other intelligent civilizations out there, often the issue of time comes up. Some people think that every advanced civilization necessarily reaches a point where they're smart enough to be capable of killing themselves off, but not yet smart enough to know how to stop it. I would argue that we are there now. So this is it. This is all we've got. So let's take care of each other, and let's remember that we're all in this together as we're careening through space at 67,000 miles per hour on our little strawberry seed, just trying to figure out how we got here. Thank you. She hasn't slept in like a year, you guys. It's amazing. So good. <laughs> <laughs> and the, I think the next time your kid's asking about the universe and my kids are baby explaining it to each other, we strap them down and make them watch a video of this <laughs> 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 until they can recite it back to us. <laughs> She's such an impressive human. She's like, I want to breathe. I want to be her when I grow up. Uh, uh, things, so. things and stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, um, so we're all in this together, and uh, I like to think that we're all trying, we're all doing the best we can with what we have all the time. Uh, so every month, an assembler shares a story about how they're doing their best. No? Oh. But we're trying, what we're really going to try to do first is sing... <laughs> A word. <laughs> this a was song. the intro to the song. <laughs> <laughs> she was getting there. Let her work. Yeah. It was, <laughs> it's really roundabout. Uh, please welcome back Steve Watkins. Take it away, Steve. Thanks, Steve. Ah, <laughs> oh, God, I love this place. It's such a cool place. I love Freedom Park. Um, <laughs> All right, 
right, so this is one of my songs that I wrote when I was just really, really broke. And uh, I wish I could have told myself back then I uh, it would get better, but then I might not have fought as hard as I did. Um, so yeah, this song's called Snapshots. So how did we get here miles and we travel along the winding road? Tell us a story weaved in the moonlight bay and dreams of old. shooting stars I'll take my time I'll take yours out of mind and out of touch leave home where you're still young That's a weird thing to say here. So good night, you kings and queens, go to sleep and dream of needless things. I don't mind another trip round the sun. Thank you. Thank you, Steve Watkins. So all those things, yay, yes. Thanks so much. That's pretty. All those things I was saying before, 
uh, pretend I said them now. Uh, Jim, please welcome uh, a good friend of ours and mine, Marty Antoff, with a personal note. It's on the table. Okay, no, it's back. These are my kids and myself. This picture was taken on my annual vacation at Lake George, New York. This one was September last year. Mark is 52 years old. He's a very big guy. He's 6'5", and weighed 240 pounds in this picture. My other son is Shane, and he is 36 years old. And uh, mothers would understand this, but my uh, older son, Mark, uh, lives in a group home, and I only get to see him once a year. I rent the same unit on this lake, in this beautiful lake, for years. It, so it feels like a second home. And I look forward to that week. I mean, I plan what I'm going to make Mark for dinner, what treats I'm going to give him, where we're going to go. And uh, I live for that week. Well, uh, Mark is autistic. He was diagnosed 49 years ago when I was told, this is a new thing, autism. Nowadays, most people know autism as uh, someone they've seen on television or a neighbor or something that is uh, Asperger's, which, by the way, they don't use that term, I'm told, anymore. Now you're on the spectrum. But what fortunately most people don't know is that the spectrum goes from here to this genius type people all the way to here to the tragedies. And um, my son is on this side. He's a, it was always a very calm guy, uh, he sat a lot. He was an expert at sitting. Uh, eating was his favorite thing in the world. He acts very much like a, a child in a lot of ways. Um, it's impossible to tell his IQ. Uh, he, he doesn't speak. <laughs> but he'll get up from the kitchen table and, and push his chair in, and you better push yours in, because if you don't, he will. He'll scrape his plate in the, uh, in the sink and then put it in the dishwasher. And then he'll go to wash his hands and just turn on the hot water. When we get in the car, he'll get himself in, put his seatbelt on, and when we park, he'll take the seatbelt off and walk right into traffic, because he doesn't understand those concepts of danger, math, reading, writing, anything like that. And this was always Mark. I mean, he was uh, always happy to see me. It doesn't speak. He has a few uh, signs, so every time you see me, it was mama, mama, ride, because he loves to ride. That's his favorite thing. Well, something happened uh, early this year, and that this is what I am trying to learn to deal with. In January, they thought he had the flu, so they treated him with the flu because it was flu-like symptoms. And then over the next few months, he radically began to change. His behavior came, became out of control. Uh, he, who, he who no longer liked to sit was now hyper, and they talked to me in the summer about, you better n cancel that uh, September vacation because we don't think he's going to be well enough to go by then seeing all kinds of doctors, asking all kinds of questions. And so by uh, September, he was manic, and I was told he didn't sleep for 24 hours. So they took him to Albany Medical Center, and he spent four weeks and one day there to try and get help and a diagnosis of some kind. Well, now he is a completely changed person. Everything he did before is opposite, where he only would sit now he's hyper. He's up and down the stairs every five minutes. Where he would love to go for a ride, now he won't leave the house. Where he was 240 and lived to eat anything, now he won't eat. He has 182 pounds. So um, I was told to come up for a, a meeting with the uh, staff that takes care of him and the medical people uh, for the, on the 1st of October. And I was told, don't come alone. So my younger son took a couple of days off work, and we uh, went up there together. We met in Philly and drove up. And uh, we were told the, the terrible uh, prognosis that um, there's no guarantee he will ever change back. And he is 
clearly not the person you've always known and loved. And um, I was also told I can't take him out anywhere safely. Uh, when he's in the car, he'll take off his seatbelt and jump out because he just wants to go back in the house. Um, he won't eat. They have to coax him bite by bite. And uh, he spends his day going up and down the stairs, laying down, getting up, coming down the stairs, going up. And they're learning how to care for this new person in their lives. There are three other guys in this group home. Well, the diagnosis seems to be Lyme disease. <laughs> OK. <laughs> well, Lyme disease, the, all the caregivers were telling me these shocking stories of what has happened to relatives and friends of theirs with Lyme disease. I mean, and I'll tell you a story about a girl that I read here that the same thing started with the flu symptoms and woke up one morning paralyzed. In New York State, they were telling me that, that there's so many ticks now because of climate change, which doesn't exist, we know. <laughs> uh, now the ticks are out of control. They're, they're amazing numbers of them, and they're not on just deers. They're on all kinds of animals. When you walk in the woods or you, uh, they, get in, they get into your house even because they get on the mice, and then in the wintertime, mice will come into your house to get warm, and, and you can get a tick there. And these ticks are so small that it's hard to detect. They can be smaller than a sesame seed. And 40 years ago, when we thought we knew about Lyme disease, they would say, don't worry, you get this red circle and you know you've got Lyme disease, so you go to the doctor and you get a shot and you're cured. No more. That was 40 years ago. Now they've become uh, a whole other thing. On our way home, I stopped in uh, Philadelphia and went into a little store and found this little handout. And what was on the front cover from Pennsylvania? OK. Um, if you can't see this, it's a, a target with a big tick, and it says Tiny Terra. And it had little writing on the front. It says, Lyme disease is hard to diagnose, easy to miss, and quickly becomes incurable. And it's on the rise. Apparently, it's so bad in Pennsylvania that they're telling you if you get bit by a tick, to put it in a, a Ziploc bag, seal it, and send it to the medical department that they mentioned in here to diagnose whether it's got Lyme disease. Because now they have other diseases with the Lyme disease that you get with that bite. And these ticks are so hard to detect. Um, they'll climb in your shoes. They'll go down your socks. They look, they'll get in your hair. They look for some place that's warm and dark. And there are a lot of places on our body that is warm and dark. So you have to check yourself whenever you're outside. And you have to have a very good friend to check those dark places every time you go outside. <laughs> so basically, I wanted to tell you that what I'm trying to deal with now is learning how to cope with my son, Mark. I felt like this past uh, year, I've been through hell. There were times I was on my knees. But I also want to warn you to tell people about this. You know, Ryan told me, even in K Kentucky, they've got these ticks. Now, he's been being checked since he was a child. So it's got to be in more places. So if there's anyone you know, you love, you care about, educate them on Lyme disease. And um, <laughs> one more blessing from climate change. Well, thank you very much for listening. Good night. <laughs>
Team Marjorie, lovely story, or, I mean, not a lovely story, a drawing story for sure, but we thank you for your vulnerability and sharing. If you guys would ever like to do a trying my best, um, just send me an email, ryan at sundayassemblyla.org. We'll get you up here. And yeah. Um, so we are a volunteer, and again, Ryan, 100% a volunteer uh, run organization and a donation based organization. Uh, so we rely on, uh, we rely exclusively on uh, your donations to keep these going. Uh, so we want to thank everyone who is uh, a member and who has contributed in the past. And uh, if you want, if you like Sunday Assembly, this is how uh, you can keep it going. Especially if you want to support like our Giving Tree, which is a big financial undertaking that we do every year. We do have a lot of things donated, but it definitely yeah, We do helps. a lot of special projects uh, outside of the, the monthly assembly. Yeah, and I think right. that, that's really the, the through line and the heart of, of our community. So, And we see our community giving back in, in lots of different ways. We, uh, we, we couldn't do it, you know, frankly, without, uh, without funding or uh, right. you know, renting the venue and the website and the uh, staff and all of those um, the expenses. But we also couldn't do it without uh, the volunteers and your time and your words and your stories and uh, your presence. So thank you for all the, all the ways uh, that, that you share and form a community with us. Be it money, your presence, you know, just being here and sharing the space with us, we appreciate it all. So um, volunteers are circulating with boxes, or if you'd rather give a quick credit card donation, raise your hand and one of our credit card concierge will come by and you can swipe. Um, if that's too much trouble and you're like me, you don't carry uh, a lot of stuff on you, uh, you can become a member for as little as five dollars a month uh, on our website right here's the link to become a member and members get a cool green name badge status and uh, if you uh, donate at the <laughs> 20 dollar or more uh level a month you get a free t-shirt yes. or a mug <laughs> Hang on, it was on video. <laughs> do tricks tricks for tips I was going to move on but now I want Phil to dance I now. know what's he going to do <laughs> my eyes are fixed to that mustache yeah right <laughs> yeah there we go <laughs> Woo. you love to see it folks <laughs> careful that's a, that's a load bearing pull <laughs> yeah it is <laughs> it's, a, it's a family it's a, it's a family show <laughs> Okay, before we stand for the last song, uh, we have a couple things to talk about. Uh, next month, we will be right back here at the Hudson on December 8th, second Sunday, for a monthly assembly. Uh, we have several events between now and then, literally like <laughs> 17 events between now and then, one of which is happening tonight. Um, today. Our today, yeah. Our unofficial movie club is going to catch the 4 o'clock screening of Doctor Strange at Universal. So if you want to join that after breakfast. Doctor Sleep. Oh, oh yeah. Doctor Sleep. Some Sorry. doctor. I'm a big Benedict Cumberbatch fan, so you know. So Wish right. So thinking. if you wanted to go to uh, brunch at Spoon Fed across the street afterwards, and with us. still with us, you'd still have time to make it over uh, to the movie at four o'clock with a couple other assemblers. For Doctor Sleep, mm -hmm. not Doctor Strange. Not Doctor Sleep. Doctor. Just because of that, I'm not going. Doctor, some kind. A medical professional. Yes. That's uh, what that's about. It's actually, it's alternate title after this ambient. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a thriller, right? Right, You yeah. never know what's going to happen after you take it. Uh, so uh, as we were saying, between assemblies, we have a, a lot 
going on uh, from, we've got a, a pickleball group now. If you don't know what pickleball is, I'm, I'm still don't in that either. camp. But, <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's, a, it's a rookie group, so they, they teach. Uh, personal growth book club, game nights, paint parties, movie nights, family dinners, pub trivia, uh, all sorts of you know, gift wrapping parties, you uh, can all sorts of stuff. So right, 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 for right. a com complete, uh, for a complete list, you've got a list of uh, events in your program. For the most complete list, uh, you can always check out SundayAssemblyLA.org. Also, you can check out our handy community board over there ah. that Toddy G manages. And Marsha. This time, and Marsha. <laughs> um, yeah, that's got a listing of, I think, all of our events on it that are available for you to sign up for. And we'll pass that clipboard around at uh, brunch, brunch, too, if you want yeah. to just get on the list for any of those events and make sure you stay in the loop. Uh, your RSVP helps make sure you're notified of any uh, changes. changes and make sure that we don't cancel the event if we, right. you know, if a couple people get yeah. sick and we don't know who's coming. So yes. uh, we know to look for you and try to please stay. So don't be afraid to RSVP if you're not sure. We get it. It's LA. So we have to leave here, but we hope you don't go home ever. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we'd be delighted if you join us for brunch at um, Spoon Fed over on Seward Street. It's a few blocks that way. That way, I don't know. I'm not a just go out the go out the front door, <laughs> turn right, cross yes. the street, yes. the first street, right, first cross street. Yeah, there's plenty of room, plenty of Follow food choices. Herd. All of your food allergens can be met there. Um, <laughs> plus, we'll have sale <laughs> t-shirts for sale. <laughs> Listen, you guys, got I've lived in tap. California for three <laughs> years and I still don't have a food allergy. Okay, I'm real upset about it because that you know of. I thought they handed that shit out at the DMV. <laughs> Like, here's your license. You're allergic to nuts. <laughs> <laughs> but I haven't got one yet, so whatever. I've been here uh, 32 years and have nuts. <laughs> so but first, <laughs> let's invite Steve back up and uh, to play us out. And if everyone wants to uh, stand for this one, if, if you'd like to, uh, a good it's little be a fun song. sing along that'll see us out. Check, check, check. Hello. Check. All right, well, I want to thank you guys once again for having me out here. It's absolutely been my pleasure to play for you today. I want to say I thank Christine Jones again for jumping in on those first couple songs. you dream of once in a love to dream of dreams really do come true Someday I'll wish upon a star Wake up where the clouds are far That's where
Happy birthday, Sala. And thanks to our, our lovely performance artist. Yes, <laughs> thank you guys. Thank you, Steve. <laughs> Special shout out to Sabrina, Steve, Marjorie. Marsha. Marsha, all of our volunteers, you guys. Um, don't forget, you can find us on all the places on the interwebs up there. And address to Spoon Feds in your program or just follow us over. Yep. We'd love to talk some more. And until next time, live, live better, better, help, help often, often, and wonder, wonder more. more. Thank you. Thank you guys. Good six See years. you at brunch. <laughs>